Hello, I've, I've interrupted Sarah Crane at work at Milton Keynes University Hospital, where she's the lead chaplain. Um, I'm just going to uh, have a little conversation with her. Um, Sarah, these have, these have been some dark times. I'm just wondering how it's been for you in your context. Um, it's been a big challenge. What are we with? Uh, as we chat, it's the first week of June. So we've been in this sort of um, strange world for about three months. The hospital's been very empty at times, which obviously is not something we're at all used to. But it's not just been empty of patients, it's been empty of all the people that visit every single day um, and who you have random conversations with and, and that's, been, um, that's been hard. But all, I think the biggest challenge has been supporting our staff um, for whom life's been very difficult. You know, they, lots of them have the same anxieties as everyone else, but in a very... Um, intense way because of the increased uncertainty of working in a hospital and who might they come into contact with and what's going on. At one time we had over 100 people here with COVID-19. That's an awful lot of people to be cared for um, with a reduced workforce because we've had people unwell too. I, I don't suppose anyone prepares you for this sort of stuff? I don't think you can prepare. I mean, I've spoken to people who've worked here for 30 years and they've said, I've never seen anything like this. Um, how have I coped? I think the NHS is great at having a sense of humour and we find that dark humour is useful in so many ways. But that's not to be flippant about the pain of what's happened. Um, I think like lots of people, I've coped by comfort eating. <laughs> I've coped by speaking to my family an awful lot more than I normally would trying to be even more serious about sleeping well and eating well and getting outside and all the things that restore me. What has your faith meant to you as you've been going through this? I think the powerful message of the God who is with us, the God who is with us in pain, the God who is with us in suffering, the God who is with us in death, the God who never leaves us, who's part of our very being, is an enormous strength and enormously powerful. Um, that's not to say that the suffering and the pain and the difficulty doesn't feel very real and doesn't feel unfair and cruel, but it is to say that God is still here and that that suffering around the world is, is part of God's pain, um, part of God's heartache. I'm sure there's a lot of it's there's there's been a lot of darkness but where, where have you seen the light i think i've mostly seen the light in other people i've seen the light in the kindness of the people that do the simplest things you know um in my neighbor that dropped off some cinnamon buns she'd made because she thought that that would be nice um I've seen kindness in, in our staff, in our teams of people saying, are you okay? And of, in the moments where you say, do you know what, I'm overwhelmed or I'm tired <laughs> or I feel really anxious, them saying, yeah, I feel a bit like that and feeling normal and like it's probably okay. Um, I've seen it in the care and kindness of others as they visit their loved ones these precious moments in moments of real sorrow, but of, of witnessing the love. I think the Queen said, didn't she, um, that our streets weren't empty because of fear, but because of love, because of the love that we held for each other, we were staying indoors. What's it like uh, wearing the protective gear that you've got to, got to wear? What, what's the impact of that in, in the hospital? It's quite depersonalising. I'm conscious that I've met lots of people in the last few months who probably wouldn't be able to point me out of a lineup. That um, they'll have seen, I guess my glasses might help, but they'll have seen this very small portion of my face. You know, this kind of bit. Um, that's strange, isn't it? Um, I notice that when I'm wearing a mask, I still smile at everybody and um, I wonder whether that's mad or whether that's just a good normal thing. 
I think it's very poignant when you see people wearing a mask at the bedside of their most precious person who's dying or has died. And you just see how this moment has been changed so much to what we'd normally see. What should we pray? I think we need to pray for those who are bereaved because what an awful time. To, it's always awful to lose somebody you love, but it's been made so much more difficult. I was conscious, um, even personally, you know, um, that if something happened to my grandparents, our family's too big and I wouldn't be able to do anything to say goodbye to them. And I thought, gosh, that's, that, just imagining that for myself makes me realise what other people have had to go through. Um, so I think we should pray for those who grieve because I think it's going to take a lot of time to process that grief compared to normal, which takes time anyway. I think we need to pray for those who care for others and I, that's a very broad term for deliberately. I think there's so many ways that fits. I think if you work in any sort of health or social care, you've been going full pelt for as long as you can and people are starting to get really tired. Um, I also wonder if there's something around loneliness that we need to be really aware of. I, I know that I was reflecting that up until a few years ago, I lived on my own and I don't know how much more difficult I would have found the last few months if I was still living on my own. If I wonder if we might pray that we would have a greater awareness of God's presence in our daily lives and that so would our neighbour and that perhaps there might be some way of us being part of that for our neighbour. In the midst of all of this, hmm. what's made you laugh most? I've been watching a lot of box sets um, because we can't do much else. My family have made me laugh. I, th I think we've really appreciated each other. We've had to um, I can say this because he won't see it, but even my dad said he was missing me and I thought, oh gosh, lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've laughed at work, we've laughed about things when they've been fun, you know, silly things. We've, we have had fun. Um, so you're not all being dead serious in the midst of all... I mean, no, no, we've really laughed about things. But we don't... We don't forget either. You laugh with this heaviness, I think, as well. That's all. That's not gone away at any point. I still feel it now. You know, yeah. we've seen the horror of people who've lost their loved ones, and that that won't leave us. Yeah. And it shouldn't. But let's hope it makes us a better hospital, a hospital where we remember what it is to know what people need, you know, and to see that.